Hello all, my name is Ashutosh Dastogi. I am a teacher by profession. My mission is to impart quality education for all. For that purpose, I am creating these videos. If you appreciate my work, then please do like my video and subscribe my channel so that I could get the motivation to prepare more videos. Anyways, in this particular lecture, we are going to discuss about quadrature aptitude modulation. These are the outlines of today's lecture. We will start up with the introduction. Then we are going to briefly discuss about quadrature amplitude modulation. Then we are going to discuss how we are going to generate QAM signal in terms of QAM transmitter. Then we are going to discuss about QAM receiver. I mean how we are going to receive or detect the QAM signal which will be followed by the advantages of QAM signal as well as the application of QAM. So we had already studied that while designing any communication system the two parameters that we need to focus is the transmission power and the transmission bandwidth both these parameters should be minimum as possible although the ssp systems are the most power as well as bandwidth efficient but still their performance lags in the noisy environment since we are not passing one sideband we are only passing one sideband for transmission which basically reduces the signal strength. So at the receiving side, when noise power or the effect of noise is higher, the SNR deteriorates much. That is why the performance of SSB signal is not well in noisy environment. So for traditional analog video broadcast, we use vestigial sideband suppressed carrier systems in which we are passing one complete sideband and the vestige or the portion of the other sideband so that we can avoid the losses at the low frequency signals. So the question arises, can we have such systems that have bandwidth efficiency equivalent to single sideband suppressed carrier systems and have better performance? So the solution is QAM that is your quadrature amplitude modulation. It is possible to transmit two double sideband suppressed carrier signals with the bandwidth of single DSBSC signal that is equivalent to twice of FM. So this is also called as quadrature carrier multiplexing. Since we are passing two DSB signal over the same range of frequencies that is why we are calling it as multiplexing and since both the signals have the same frequency but they are 90 degree phase apart that is why the name comes quadrature carrier multiplexing. With the use of QAM, we can achieve the bandwidth efficiency of SSB modulation. That is why it is also being termed as bandwidth efficient scheme. So here we have the block diagram of QAM transmitter. We have two product multipliers over here and simultaneously we will going to applying two different message signal. One is being termed as your M1T and second one is termed as your M2T one of the product multiplier will get the carrier signal AC cos of 2 pi FCT whereas the product multiplier 2 or second product modulator will get the carrier signal AC cos of 2 pi FCT minus pi by 2 which is 90 degree phase apart from the previous carrier signal. So the output of product multiplier 1 will be given as your V1T and the output of the second product multiplier is your V2T. So now the these two signals V1T and V2T will get summed up with the help of this summer and the output is your QAM signal which is denoted by your ST. So the transmitter used two separate product modulators that are supplied with two carrier waves of the same frequency that is again FC. Carrier frequencies are Differencing in the phase by 90 degrees, we had already mentioned that the transmitted signal ST consists of the sum of these two product modulator and the output is given by this particular equation AC M1T cos of 2 pi FCT plus AC M2T sin of 2 pi FCT, where AC is the carrier amplitude, M1 is the first message signal, and M2 is the second message signal. Although the carrier wave is 90 degree phase apart from the initial carrier signal that is why we have mentioned this sine of 2 pi FCT which could also be written as AC M2T cos of 
टू पाई एफ सी टी माइनस पाई बाई टू सो कॉस ऑफ टू पाई एफ सी टी माइनस पाई बाई टू टर्न आउट टू बी साइन ऑफ टू पाई एफ सी टी सो दिस इज द जर्नलाइज एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ कॉम सिग्नल और यू कैन से दिस इज द फाइनल एक्सप्रेशन फॉर योर क्वारेचर कट कैरियर मल्टीप्लेक्स सिग्नल सो दिस पर्टिकुलर सिग्नल ए सी एम वन टी कॉस ऑफ टू पाई एफ सी टी कंपोजिटली रिप्रेजेंट द सिग्नल वी वन टी and this complete signal ac m2t sin of 2 pi fct represents the composite signal of v2t so with and simultaneously we'll going to add up these two signals v1t and v2t and at output we'll going to have the signal the complete signal st which is the summation of these two so these signals do not overlap with each other because they are orthogonal to each other so obviously both these signals possess the same frequency but they will not going to overlap with each other or they will not going to interfere with each other since they are 90 degree phase apart to each other or we could say that they are orthogonal to each other with the help of qam we can pass two different signals using the bandwidth of one so we are exploiting this particular characteristics that signals will not going to overlap since they are 90 degree phase apart or they are orthogonal to each other again qam is having the bandwidth efficiency like ssb signal and better performance than the ssb signal since we are using the same bandwidth twice of fm for passing two different signals then we could say that we can we have achieved the bandwidth efficiency like ssb signal but since we are passing both the side bands then we could say that their performance is much better in comparison to ssb signal especially in the noisy environment so this particular slide shows how we'll going to receive our qam signal so initially we'll going to have the qam signal st as the input of our qam demodulator or qam receiver which will going to simultaneously applied to the two different product multiplier one having the carrier frequency of 2 cos 2 pi fct and the second product multiplier is having the carrier frequency 90 degree phase apart which is equivalent to 2 sin 2 pi fct so the outcome of first product multiplier is given by w1t and the output of the second product multiplier is given as your w2t w1t and w2t will get passed through the low pass filter and finally we will going to have the message signal m1t at the output of first product multiplier and m2t at the output of second product multiplier which will get passed through the low pass filter so the multiplex signal st is applied simultaneously to two separate coherent detectors with the same carrier frequency but differing in the phase by the 90 degree this is what we have discussed earlier now let us understand it mathematically how we will going to get the signal back message signal back m1t and m2t from the composite signal st so w1t would have been given by this particular equation where the carrier pulse 2 cos of 2 pi fct will get multiplied this composite signal st which is nothing but your qam signal which is given by ac m1t cos of 2 pi fct plus ac m2t sin of 2 pi fct so after multiplying this carrier signal cos of 2 pi fct we'll going to have this expression twice of ac m1t cos square 2 pi fct plus ac m2t sin of 2 times of 2 pi fct since 2 cos 2 pi fct into sin 2 pi fct we have applied this formula sin 2a is equal to 2 sin a cos a and we are having this expression so now for this particular term 2 cos square 2 pi fct we have applied the formula for cos 2a and we are left with ac m1t cos of 2 times of 2 pi fct plus 1 plus ac m2t sin of 2 times of 2 pi fct so after proper multiplication we are left with ac m1t plus ac times of m1t cos of 2 times of 2 pi fct plus ac m2t sin of 2 times 2 pi fct so obviously when we'll going to pass this complete signal through a low pass filter whose cutoff frequency is equivalent to 
FM where FM is the maximum frequency component of your message signal then these two higher frequency terms will simply get rejected and we are left with AC M1T. Similarly we could find the expression for W2 as AC M2T minus AC M2T cos of 2 times of 2 pi FCT plus AC M1T sine of 2 times of 2 pi FCT. Again this complete expression when we pass these signals which are centered about twice of FC will get rejected and only will we will have this AC M2T. So obviously the output of the low pass filter will only having this term AC M2T which is nothing but the second message signal. So the output of the top detector is AC M1T whereas the output of the bottom detector is AC M2T. It is very essential to maintain the correct phase as well as the frequency relationship else we are going to have some distortions while receiving out the signals. So for the synchronization purpose a pilot signal outside the passband of the modulated signal is sent whose frequency and phase are related to the carrier wave so that we could avoid the distortion. So here the major advantage of QCM is the addition of two sinusoids is a linear operation which will not going to create any new frequency components. Hence the bandwidth of the composite signal that means the addition of the two signals is comparable to the bandwidth of the double sideband components. Hence we could say that we are passing two different signal in the bandwidth requirement of single double sideband signal. Now the application areas of QAM. NTSC I mean National Television Standards Committee and Phase Altering Line are the analog color television systems where I and Q signals carry the components of the color information. So the QAM carrier phase is recovered from the special color burst transmitted at the beginning of each line scan. I mean we could say that for from these two NTSC and PAL systems for transmitting color television signals we are using this QAM. So C QAM or we could also be called as compatible QAM. It is also being used in AM stereo radio to carry the stereo difference information. These are the references. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.